Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Heaven. In this episode, I'm gonna do an unboxing of The Order of Vampire Hunters by Dark Gate Games. This is a rather large box, quite heavy. Uh, it's a miniatures games, cooperative. So let's open it up and see what's inside. The Order of Vampire Hunters by Dark Gate Games. Let's take a look at the box. The front has a nice piece of artwork. It's a bit dark, but it has for the heroes on, on the front with the big vampire looming over them. And the back of the box has an example of gameplay here with all the tiles and the miniatures and the dice and cards. And here are some of the miniatures clearly depicted. Okay, some text. Let's open the box. So first up, as usual, the rule book. It's rather big. It's a big rule book. So let's see what's in it. We have some backstory here, a table of contents, the components with pictures, more components, and even more components. So a lot of stuff in this box. Uh, explanation of the tiles, the setup, the game, a rules summary, game mechanics. All right, it's about movement, line of sight, stuff like that. Attacking. So there's plenty of rules. There's attribute tests, special abilities, interacting, trading, sunset. The game is a day and night cycle. And there's different kinds of vampires, relics. So there's quite a lot to take in. Objectives and winning, some game options. So already at page 30, still reading the rules. Number of players, it's a two to play, two to four player game. And now there's campaign rules. So, okay, you can play this game as separate missions or as a campaign. And it says here you start with the hunt one, two, three, or four, depending probably on how hunt two ends. Then it's hunt five, possibly ten, and hunt six. And this is another order. So there's two campaigns that you could play. And from part uh, page 36, the separate missions are explained here. So here's Hunt 1, Hunt 2 and 3, 4, 5 and all of them clearly with the map tiles laid out and some nice artwork as well. 8, 9 and 10, 11, 12, so that's it, 12 hunts in this book as well and a summary on the back. It's quite a hefty rule book there. Then here is these ID cards. So the player dashboards, they're double-sided. They look like they are the same. No, this one does not have an inventory slot and this one does. And there's four of these. They are made of thin cardboard. Uh, pretty thin though, so be careful with these. And that's that. We have the day and night cycle, which has been shuffled around in the box and therefore bent because it's pretty thin. So yeah, those could have been a bit thicker because that's just a shame. Not that it matters that much, but you can see that all the sliding around does tend to damage the thin paper. Then, fortunately, the tiles are in thicker cardboard, so that's good. This is a nice, decent thickness, uh, kind of like uh, Mansions of Madness. Uh, I think Zombie Side has a bit thicker tiles, but uh, this is, uh, yeah, I think this is similar to Mansions of Madness, so that's good enough. It's uh, solid. It has nice artwork. It has a nice finish. Smooth. It's double-sided. And the icons are very 
clear to read. So that's the first. Here's another one. Some rooms in it. And here is what seems to be an attic. Here are more rooms, corridors, and another room, storage, basement perhaps. So the artwork is pretty cool. It's all very dark and moody. There is a lot of human bones over here and a pit into the ground. There's these and these thin lines indicate different areas. So that's also very clear. So the tiles look very good. The artwork is nice, very thematic, very dark. And uh, this is a vampire hunting game that plays out in modern uh, times. So a bit like the movie Blade. And uh, these tiles do bring that across very well, I think. A token sheet here, this punch board with all these tokens, very clearly illustrated. Um, we have these here, these are doors. Uh, we have several round tokens. We have this uh, pit with, with a ladder going in and out. So a, a tunnel, most likely. And on the other side, there's another corridor. And all of these tokens are double-sided and the doors are open on this side. And there's also windows that you can break and then daylight comes in to hurt the vampires. And there's another sheet with similar tokens. More doors, another one of those tunnels. Also double-sided. Oh, and they punch out very easily, which is also a good thing. Because I always hate to have little tears of paper when they're hard to punch. But this looks like that will be no problem at all. And here, the customary cardboard box that holds the minis in plastic trays. So I'm going to carefully flip this over. All right, it's a bit tight on one side. Oh, there we go. Okay, so the cardboard box itself is not of the thickest kind. It's not super thin either, but do be careful with this. It does have these nice, cool rivets on the side, that's nice touch. Some artwork on the inside as well. So that's that's nice. All right, let's see what this box holds. Okay, so even though I tossed it over, the insert holds everything nicely into place. That is a good. And we have these dice here. So we have the regular uh, six-sided D6s, white ones with the uh, die that uh, determines if your weapon breaks or not, which is a red die. And they're nice and big, rounded corners. They're basic, but they're, they're you know, they're nice, decent in uh, lace. And we have a pack of cards here. So let's see what that is. All right, so Joshua has a wooden stake. So this is probably stuff that your character gets, the starting equipment perhaps, and then what you can roll to damage them. Uh, kind of looks like uh, the same as in zombie side, I think. The range is here, so in the same area, a uh, range of one area, then the amount of dice you roll and a hit on that number or higher. So that's pretty straightforward. It is noisy, the flamethrower. <laughs> and, you know, there's a couple of things that do remind me of zombie side. And there's a backside as well. So we have different cards of those with different characters. So these four, for the start players. And we have these cards, they are combined attacks. Okay, so let's see how many of those there are here. Combined attacks in green and combined attacks in red. Let's have a look at those. So it has a cost, a reward, and a penalty. There's kind of different ones. Plenty of text to read, but it's very clear to read to me. 
the contrast is good enough. Uh, white letters and a dark background, so it's easy to read. The font is big enough. That's good too. Then we have these cards for also for the heroes. So their their stats, their health. And some different stats over here, their speed, their, their intelligence perhaps, or their mind checks, and their book, perhaps they have lore checks in this game as well. And, and the other side has them uh, as turned heroes, so you can be turned into a vampire. That's pretty cool. Then we have a special rules card, so that's like a player aid for one for each player. And we have these cards, which are the monster cards. So we have here a guardian, it's kind of a dog like vampire creature. And on the other side, it has an extra ability. The stats are the same on this one. So presumably, I, I'm not sure, but you can flip them over at some point. Maybe it's a day and night cycle, I'm not sure. But at least they all have two sides. And here is a thrall, a giant bat, a burrower, a warrior vampire, a daywalker, Oh, uh, Upir, he's called Upir, that's his special ability. Uh, a Thayer, who is an elder. Uh, this is Ivaki, also an elder. And this is Lord Kofas, who is also an elder, I assume, but this does not have the elder <laughs> backside, but he is an elder. At least that's what it looks like. So we have those. Those were the cards. Then we have these colored bases that you can clip onto your miniatures to give them a color to indicate uh, who they are, to set them apart easily. All right, so the first tray of minis. Here's one of the heroes. So I'm just going to show you the heroes. I'm not familiar enough with this game to know all the names. This guy's pretty cool. He has some armor on. He has this crossbow in his hand, a wooden stake in the other. And he is in a very dynamic pose, ready to shoot. These minis are the regular size for miniature games, comparable to Zombie Side. And uh, they look very detailed, and they are made of a very sturdy plastic. Even this. The slender part over here, which looks very thin, is very strong indeed, and this stake as well. So that's good, it's a very sturdy kind of plastic. Then we have this hero who has a, a winch, and he can pull um, vampires out into the daylight. That's pretty cool. And then there is a guy with a flamethrower, a dude with long hair, also wearing similar armor, holding a stake in his left hand and a flamethrower in his right. Also in a very dynamic pose. Lots of detail, he's got grenades and stuff hanging from his belt. So that looks very cool, you can see all the, the parts of his boot and of his armor. So there's plenty of detail here, and like I said, this is pretty solid material. Here's another hunter, a girl with a crossbow as well. Also very well detailed, very cool. And then there's this running woman with a stake and a wrist crossbow. Uh, she does seem like she's a bent just slightly, but a little bit of hot water will straighten that out. And they're all in very dynamic poses. Pretty cool. Then we have this vampire thrall here. 
this female uh, vampire who's screaming at you very threateningly. And it has nice detail for minis in this scale. Yep. So there's five of those here. Then there's five of these male thralls. Kind of looks like he's just turning, you know, ripping at his skin. That's pretty cool. Also in a very dynamic pose. Anyway, we have this guy, this, this fully evolved vampire with wings under his arms, pointy ears, big teeth. So that's those. Very nicely done. Plenty of detail to paint them as well. They look really nice. Here is another one in a different sculpt. Very cool. So there's five of those as well. Let's go on to the next. So there's a thin sheet in between here, which is good, keeps these models into place. And there's a whole lot more cards here. So that's pretty nice as well. I'm expecting this to be gear. But let's look at the rest of the minis first. So with this guy, who looks like he's coming out of the ground, maybe one of those burrowers. Pretty cool, he has these predator-like fangs. Uh, a little bit less detail on this one. He's a very um, smooth skin, it seems, but maybe that's just the creature. Because on his back, you can see some ridges here. Maybe he needs to be smooth to burrow through the soil. <laughs> so that's that guy. Pretty cool. Here's another one of these guys pretty creepy looking he looks like you know he's he's a vampire who's seen some action he's kind of withering away maybe he needs a fresh drink of blood he's got this crack in his chest and these wings are almost gone so that's pretty cool as well there's six of those in this box uh, there's these guardian dogs here, creepy vampire dogs who look like they're, you know, like undead dogs, the hollow rib cages and their skull-like head. So that's pretty creepy. Very nice. There's two, four, six of those as well. Then there's five, no, six of these uh, gargoyle-like vampires with their wings out. They don't have arms, they just have wings. And they're demon-like creatures, small heads, and a big wingspan. That's pretty awesome. So enough detail there as well as you can see. So that's those and then there's the three elders. So we have this dude who looks very cool, very Skeletor-like, muscular, his robes hanging around his, his waist and his, over his head. He's got this big spear trident all uh, made of bones and a rib cage here and a pelvis, a couple of skulls, his spine over there. So that's cool, a lot of detail there. Very morbid looking. So that's the first Elder. Here's another one who looks a lot more vampire-like. He's almost a complete bat creature. He's a lot more bulky too. His giant body, big head, wings on his arms, long claw-like fingers. That's a nice model as well. And then finally the biggest one, this elder with his billowing cape, or perhaps those are his wings, 
also very musculature, musculine, and he's jumping at you, he, his, his cape is uh, attached to the base, so it's just like he's actually flying through the air, you can see some of the bones here in those wings, that's pretty cool too. So yeah, very decent miniatures. So now let's just crack open these cars and see what those are very quick. So let's see, these are Activations Knight. And Activations for the day. And Terror Events. Compulsions as well. Okay. So there are vampire compulsions. I guess when you're turned, you have compulsive uh, traits. So you need fresh blood, you're a turn co, you're a thrill seeker, etc. So that's pretty cool. Nice mechanic. Uh, this is uh, the terror events, you just have text on them and stuff happens so we have those and there's these day events which tell you what to do all the vampires in the area attack you you have tests so this is all kind of bad stuff that can happen and i suppose that during the night it gets worse <laughs> so these are probably tougher so there's those cards and the cards are nice and smooth, they have a very uh, shiny finish, as you can see. Uh, they're thick enough, so the quality of the cards is pretty good. Overall, let's check the next stack. So we have special abilities. Plenty of those. I like how they all color coded them so you can keep them apart easily. And there's Elder Influence, which is also red, so that's not a different color. So let's see. Elder Influences, they are also horizontal. There's more tests here and stuff that happens. And you can pass or fail. So they're kind of like traps. Elder influence, just stuff that happens because of the elders. Then there's um, special abilities. So you have got a med kit, a garlic fog. That's pretty handy. Trident, fire bomb. Okay, so items. Oh, this is equipment. So yeah, equipment is green, and so is special abilities. Well, okay. So this is all equipment, and here are the abilities. There we go. So that is just text. Yep. All right. So lots of those cards as well. So there's plenty of stuff that you can do in this game and also plenty of stuff that will happen to you. So that will keep the game interesting, I suppose. And then there's another final deck of cards with relics, items, and we have some different colors over here as well, so relics and items. There are encounters, and there's uh, the extractor, which is the guy with the winch. He's, uh, he's called Pete. <laughs> All right. Is it the same on both sides? I suppose. Okay, so let's have a quick look at these cards as well. So these are the um, encounters. So thralls. So this is basically the the spawn deck, I guess. So tells you what to spawn. Then there's these items, but there's a collapse in there as well. So these are the search cards. You search for items, and you can find something useful, or uh, an enemy jumps up, or you set off a trap. So that's stuff that can happen. And then there was these cards as well, the relics. 
So we have these special items that your heroes can use as well, which is pretty cool. All these old relics that were used in past generations to fight vampires. That's pretty cool. All right, so those are all the cards and the minis in the base game. That's everything that's in the box. And so that was the unboxing of the Order of Vampire Hunters by Dark Gate Games. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and see you next time on Board Game Heaven.